And at no point during this whole exchange did I think, I'm going to jail. Now, my father always told me, I will never buy you your first car, which was mostly true because he didn't buy it for me. He gave it to me because he was sick of it. 150,000 miles and you had to hold the steering wheel right about there to get it to go straight. Somebody backed into it, caught the driver's door just perfect, put a nice deep dent in it. That $300 car was now worth $1,500 worth of door. It's time to go ahead and step up to the modern day cop car. So I got a dark blue with blacked out wheels and silver center caps Dodge Charger SXT because I could definitely not insure a V8. Well, lo and behold, six months into owning that car, it got hailed on. And it didn't really get totaled, but the damage was enough that it made more sense to trade it in than to keep it around. So I went ahead and did what a millennial would do, bought a red Challenger and put Hellcat wheels on it. My excellent coworkers convinced me that I needed a stick car. And I did, it wasn't the wrong thing to do. We went out and I bought a 2016 white Subaru BRZ. Fantastic first car to learn stick in. Except there was one big problem, I couldn't drive it home. So my buddy Hector had a great time wailing on it as we drove the 40 some odd miles back to drop him off at his job. I got to learn to drive stick in the worst possible place you could learn to drive stick. Behind my place of employment. So I got to stall the car probably 30 or 40 times with all my coworkers looking on and laughing. Late one night, I pulled to the end of this road. It's a T intersection. Light was red, I stopped. Whew, this is awesome. I really know how to drive this car. And right up next to me pulls this horrendous beater of a car. I could see it in my rear view mirror as it came up. The license plate was hanging by one bolt. I look over and it's a girl. And not a bad looking one either. As I look over, she does this. I'm like, this is the best car ever. And at that moment, two things occurred to my very, very dumb, just barely past teenage mind. I need to launch this car and I need to drift it and I need to do it right now. Threw it right up to probably five grand, dropped clutch. And I felt like I was on another planet for about three seconds until the car headed directly towards the median. Holy crap. Turned it out and headed towards the other curb. Turned it again towards the other curb. Finally straightened it out. And that was the last time I did anything like that in the BRZ. Until two weeks later when we went to film a video with my friends. But this is the closest I've been to death. And we decided that for one of the sequences of this little video we were going to do on their club, we're going to go ahead and just everybody drift the same corner. Bunch of Camaros, Mustangs, Challengers, and me in my Subaru BRZ. I should have been the one that should have been able to drift. No. Dropped it into second gear, probably doing about 35 miles per hour, kicked the tail out, and it started spinning. And it kept spinning right into a field where it landed less than a foot away from a metal pole. And that is the exact moment I knew that God was not done with me. <laughs> you think I can't get any dumber than that? I thought, you know, the next logical thing to do is to buy a Corvette. If you're 21 and you own a Corvette, everybody thinks you rented it for prom. Fast 8 came out, and at the time I had, you know, I'd had the Corvette for a couple months. After the movie was over, I decided it's time to open this car up, see what it can do. 70, 80, 90, 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And right about that time, we saw off in the distance an unmarked state trooper going the same direction as us, but still a state trooper. And we were closing in fast. I, 
I, I've never done this at any other time. I stood on the brakes, didn't pass him, but I knew what I had to do. I pull off the side of the road, state trooper follows right behind. And at no point during this whole exchange did I think, I'm going to jail. I knew I should, but it just didn't occur to me. And he was not ticked off, rather good attitude, kind of smiling actually. Do you know how fast you were going? Pretty dang. Good answer. Okay. He hasn't dragged me out of the car. I'm not going away in handcuffs. Well, sir, considering my age, the car, and the fact that it's pretty late, I think it's almost downright responsible what I was doing, is what I said to him. And he kind of chuckled. You want to call it 85? Yes, sir, that sounds excellent. A couple months after Fast and Furious came out and that whole incident with the Corvette happened, I went to see a movie. It's called Baby Driver. When I saw that trailer and I saw him with the headphones in, bright red car, I saw him do that beautiful reverse drift into the corner, I thought, that is just about the coolest thing I've ever seen. And that movie has been widely criticized by pretty much every car enthusiast out there because it's totally unrealistic. The car can't do half of the stunts that are in the movie, being all wheel drive. And of course there's six different stunt cars, half of them are set up rear wheel drive to allow them to do that. I don't think we still watch movies to see something real. We wanna see something a little bit extraordinary. And that to me, it really spoke to me and yeah, I definitely did see myself in the character. I remember as I was sitting there in the theater thinking, somebody needs to buy a red WRX, and if that plate's available, somebody needs to get that plate. Less than a couple months later, I went ahead and bought a 2017 Subaru WRX. Red, black straight spoke rally wheels, and as soon as I left the dealership, put that plate on order. It's a fantastic film. The whole thing is beautifully choreographed. Even the gunshots in certain scenes are just in time with the music. And it's just a little bit like having every day be Halloween and Groundhog Day. You're in character with that car every single day. I have to be a little bit careful who I tick off. I have to be careful in traffic. I don't want to cut anybody off. It's definitely a unique car now just thanks to that license plate but it has been a fantastic journey the insurance is the one downside it's twice as much as my Corvette was but I've had a blast in it it has been well documented on VinWiki I think as of today we hit 24,000 miles on our way up here to Atlanta and that was kind of my journey through all those cars and it didn't just teach me what I loved in a car or what I loved in life, but really how to be satisfied with things. And that I think is one of the most important things in life is to find what you love, find who you love, learn to be satisfied wherever you're at.